In PIDs, there's key relationships between the terms. And the key relationships are what's so important. It's not the gains themselves, it's the relationships between. So the first is there's a relationship between the filters and the D term. It's this arrow that matters. You can have any given D term for any different given filtering. What is the difference? It's the ratio kind of between the two. If you have a lot of D term, you typically need a decent amount of filtering because your signal needs to be really smooth. If you, your D gains are lower, well, then you can have less filtering. So it's, again, it's that relationship between the two. Well, the same thing goes for the, the P term <clears throat> to the D term, right? If you have a lot of D term, you are going to need a lot of P term because you're uh, dampening the heck out of, that's what the D term is, dampening. It's so when the quad wants to, to move left or move right and you command a stick input, that D term is fighting that. Or if the wind pushes the quad, it, the D term is gonna fight that. It doesn't want the thing to move. So that's what the, the dampening term does. Makes sense, D for dampening. So don't, I don't even say D for derivative. That just confuses people. That's, that's what it is on the gyro signal from a math standpoint, but just think of D for dampening. The P term is the pushing term, right? So it pushes the, the quad to stay on track where your sticks are. So I know the definition is proportional, but just think of it as a pushing term. Then finally, there's the I term, and there's a relationship between the P and the I term as well. And I have a video on that. I'll, uh, if you're watching this in post, I'll put it down in the video description. But that's a key relationship here. When you have wobbles where your quad is wobbling, you know, as it's flying forward or something, typically you'll see it for cine lifters or bigger things. That's because their I term is too high in relation to the P term, not the I term in relation to the D or the I term in relation to the filtering. It goes in this order. These arrows are what matter, not the gains themselves. It's really the relationship between these terms. So that's, it's just important. Right? And we refer to them as P, I, and D, but it really should be, I think it would be simpler if it was D, P, I, um, just for the concept of grasping this. So flight PIDs, you know, flight to PIDs, the, the key that messes people up for tuning is what, you know, that's great that you have these relationships, but what does that mean, you know, in, as far as adjustments? Well, when you adjust, you know, when you want to adjust this relationship and get better nose tracking, you really want to adjust the relationship between your D and your P term. You would raise the I term to come along for the ride because we only want to adjust one thing. We want to adjust and get better nose tracking or better throttles. You know, if you're punching the throttle and you want to get better tracking on that, one part of that, and then there's little side features like anti-gravity and things, but the core fundamental is you need more P term so that the quad stays on the, the nose. Or if you're in prop wash and you're getting like a, a jerk move um, when you're getting on the throttle and it's kind of the nose is jerking over or jerking off course and then coming back and then you get some oscillations at the same time, you need more P-term to get to keep that quad following and staying on your sticks. So when you adjust this arrow, this relationship, you want this term to come along at the same time because if not, if you just move P up and don't mess with I, well, now you're adjusting two things at one time. And maybe you don't want to or realize that. And then you start to chase your tail because you're adjusting one term at a time, fixing one thing, and then something else goes wrong. And then you change that thing. And then, then now it messes something else up. And it just, you get these compounding effects and I think people get confused. So that's key. Of course, you know, the relationship of what are we changing if we want to you know, mess around with the, the P to I relationship. Well, that's this arrow that this combination, if you have wobbles, again, um, slow oscillation or wobbles, you're going up and hopping off the throttle and then the quad is kind of wobbling around. 
your I term may be too high in relation to your P term, so you need to bring your I gains down. So that's kind of like the last and final term. So again, that relationship is paramount. Once you have these things tuned, so you maybe increase P a little bit, reduced I a little bit, that's, and that's generally what beta flight on the current default you would need to possibly tune up a little. Typically, P is a little low for beta flight, and it needs to go up. Um, and I is, is pretty high as a default, and sometimes I needs to come down for like a cine lifter, things like that. So these two moves I just showed where P went up a little bit and I went down a little bit, that's not out of the possibility of things you might need to tweak on your clock. Maybe the default is perfect for you. It really just matters on the moment of inertia, how heavy it is, all kinds of stuff. So again, if you want better nose tracking, you want the thing to stay on course better and not move off the sticks, have a tighter feel, you're going to raise the relationship between the D and the I, the P turn. That is what's going to keep it on track. And then if you're getting wobbles when you're raising that, or just in general, you're going to want to reduce your I turn in between these two things. So that flight, what I'm seeing to what adjustments I need to make, that's the translation piece that, that, uh, you know, it'd be really good, future video, to have an index of what's what. This is a big one. When you want to increase your prop wash performance, you raise them all. You move the whole thing up. Like if your nose tracking is good and your wobble is good, you really are raising your D term to increase prop wash performance. But with that, the P and the I come along for the ride. Because if you just raise the D, well, now you're going to mess up. You could start to be over dampened again. And you're going to will get a, have a looser feel. If you just raise D and leave P and I alone, because now you're raising D, which can help with prop wash performance, but now you're going to make it more sluggish for stick inputs because that D term is, is fighting your stick inputs. So the only way to do that appropriately without just raising D and then messing up other stuff is you got to raise everything together or lower everything together if you're getting like trilling oscillations or something like that. So that fundamental of, you know, you raise it all or reduce it all to, you know, prop wash performance is a huge part of flight performance in general, right? We're always looking for better prop wash performance. So you really want to move them all up or move them all down. You're, you're really, people will say raise your D term, but what they really mean is raise your D term and then take the rest for the ride. And uh, you can see hopefully here why the sliders make all this much easier, right? Because if not, you have to do a lot of math because it's not just, oh, I'm going to raise D10, then I'll raise P10 and I10, which is just annoying in, in general. It's the ratio between the two. So if, if D, if you did take D divided by P and that the difference is double, say it's the P term is double your D term for uh, maybe like a, a high performance racing rig or something like that. If you raise D up by half, you're going to have to raise P up by a heck of a lot more because whatever, if you raised D up by, say that P term is double your D term, if you raised D up by five points, you have to raise P up by 10 now. So it's not just you move, you know, each of them up five points, which is fairly easy. There's no math in your head. You have to do the ratio, obviously. When it's double, that's pretty straightforward. But what if it's one point? three, six is the difference between the two. So now you raised P up or D up five points. Now you got to raise P up times whatever that five points times 1.31. I don't know about you. I, I need a calculator for that. I don't know what that is in my head. So you can see where the sliders do all that kind of for you. And like smash that like button, please. Cause then I, if, if you guys get me a billion likes, then I can make videos that are Fortnite. So do you want Fortnite videos or this video? What's better?